everyone and peace over Christ all of you. Please invite your friends and let us expose the liars. In the front of us, we have somebody he claimed to be uh, a convert to Islam. And he is telling you why he converted. Yesterday, we, you know, we, I was answering and I lost uh, the power. So today we will comp you know, continue uh, where we started. So, you know, I want the Muslims to remember something. When you make an excuse of rejecting something and excuse of accepting something, you have to be consistent. Otherwise, you became, became a joke of everybody. So this guy is giving us now the excuses for why he don't accept Christianity and why he don't believe the Bible is the word of God, but he believed the Quran is the word of God. And for sure the Quran is the word of God. I mean, this is a book promises us uh, women with big boobs. And that is very, very, uh, you know, uh, proof that Allah is uh, God. And this is why I really like it when a Muslim speak about reasoning, you know, like why I believe in Allah Okay, why? Uh, we have a reason. Uh -huh. What is the reason? Uh, big boobs. So I find it very silly when a Muslim, he try to give us a presentation of what is logical. You know, logical. I mean, how even the Muslim, he can use the word logic when he is a Muslim. So I find it kind of a comedy that the person coming to us speaking about logic and he wanted us what is logical and what is not logical. And he wanted to use your brain. And supposedly your brain only have to work when it's come to the Bible, when it's come to the Quran, just let it go. So the Quran promised you uh, uh, women with big boobs, it's fine, you know, gardens full of wine and honey. It's a, it's a pimp house, it's fine, there's nothing wrong there. Uh, Suleiman, he died on the, uh, standing on his stick and nobody noticed that he is dead for a year. Uh, until the termite they ate his steak, it's fine. I mean, uh, but this person, he is a person of logic. So we will go with his logic and we will see how far the logic of the Mohammedan can go. Let us go there and watch his video. Please invite your friends. I don't appreciate lazy people. All right. As you see, we have sub uh, subtitle. I want to say thank you for the one who helped and translated this video, so I can understand. You know, not for those people who they are from Indonesia or Malaysia, they understand it very well. So the translation made for me, not for them. Dan saya buat kajian perbandingan agama selama dua tiga tahun. Akhirnya kesimpulan yang saya ada, ada dapat adalah bagi diri saya, saya bukan cakap agama lain, saya hanya bagi tahu diri saya adalah bagi saya Bible itu bukan kalam Allah, tetapi dia mengandungi sedikit kata-kata Allah. Yeah, so he made a com comparative study and he found that the Quran is the book of Allah and the Bible is not the book of Allah. I agree, by the way, the Bible is not the book of Allah anyway. Uh, but anyway. Uh, uh, but why he come with this conclusion at the sea? Orang sini boleh faham tak? As a whole, the Bible is not the words of God bagi diri saya. Hmm. But it do contains a little bit words of God. Little bit. Okay, saya bagi contoh. Mungkin orang tak tak berapa faham. Okay. Apa yang buat apa yang buat saya ni tak boleh terima? Contoh ya. Kalau saya baca ada beberapa ayat dalam dalam kitabnya tu Genesis chapter number 2 verse number 2 and 3 kitab dia dia sebut and God created the heaven and the earth in 6 days but on the 7 days God rested dia kata Tuhan menciptakan alam ini dalam 6 hari tapi pada hari yang ketujuh Tuhan beristi rehat saya nak tanya rehat ini sifat Tuhan ke sifat manusia Yeah, we hear you. We hear you. Yeah, they are very smart. You see, you know, they, those people, they, they say they study comparative study. This is what the dad, he said 20 years ago, and the Muslim, they copy paste. Obviously, he did not even read the Bible. Uh, so he's saying that it says that God, he rest. That the fact there, the word is Sabbath. You know, it, it went to Sabbath. Sabbath uh, is a word mentioned in the Quran tons of time.
and here you will notice that Islam is nothing but a counterfeit of Christianity and Judaism you will see here how much Allah he is so much in obsessed with the Sabbath but Allah is not the God of the Sabbath and the proof Muslims don't follow Sabbath and he never ordered him to follow Sabbath but Allah he was so obsessed with the word Sabbath to the point when the Jews they did fishing in Saturday in Sabbath Allah he made them pigs and monkeys and here we need to ask our, ourselves a question why the Sabbath is so important for Allah at that time and it's not important for Allah now what happened later in the video we will see this guy saying that he don't like the God of the Bible because it says he regret question did Allah regret making the Sabbath holiday so he changed it to Friday and how come Allah he will curse you and make you a pig and a monkey if you break the Sabbath but the Allah will not curse any Muslim if you break the Sabbath Friday did Allah regret and change his mind so here you see the stupidity of under the understanding the word Sabbath the word Sabbath is mean nothing to do that's for God God he created the whole earth and the heaven and he's done there's nothing more to do as a creation Jesus said I work and my father work too and he was doing that on Saturday on Sabbath the Jews they said who is this person who's breaking the Sabbath Jesus says God your father hmm, created the Sabbath for the man not the man for the Sabbath so here we notice how silly how shallow those who they are making a statement of resting actually uh, the Bible was very clear that God don't get uh, don't rest this is the book of Isaiah as you see in front of you God he don't uh, get tired God is not out of power God don't faint God don't be weary this is who is God he give the power to the one who, who is tired he is not the one who get tired so you are an idiot who don't understand what the Bible is saying and you are making it as it is as you wish or oh, God get tired okay he cannot work no more I have to go to sleep now I remember we are talking about God the Father who is not coming in the flesh of a human being if you are in the flesh of a human being the flesh will, will, will get tired so God and the verse he is quoting for us nowhere it says that God he got tired so obviously the verse does not mean what he claimed what it meant that everything is done everything is created at the same time yesterday uh, we showed you from the Quran that Allah he sat on his throne after Allah he created the six uh, the, the, the earth and the heaven in six days what he did he sat on a throne and his throne was above the water on the water Allah was floating like a dock on the water question as long you are a person who is against anything to be a nature of a human like resting is a human nature and uh, Allah uh, according to you he is not a human so why Allah sit on the chair after he finished working I mean why even the why he need to sit in the chair and why the chair is on the water can the throne of Allah be floating on nothing on the space like a spaceship so if I refuse that this God he is resting as you use the word from the translation which is a word present the Sabbath which means he is finished everything then we need to ask ourselves why Allah he sit in a chair and we showed you from different verse in the Quran as an example here chapter 11 verse number 44 how the word stawa 
mean set on, rest on. This is the word istawa. Wastawat ala al judi. You see? Wastawa. So what does it mean? It's mean rest to, to, to rest upon something, to sit upon something. So Allah, he sat on the throne, why? He, remember, he just finished the work. And other question will be, as long you are having a problem with uh, uh, resting, why Allah, uh, he need to leave the chair to create the earth and the heaven? Isn't it you Muslim believe that the Quran says if Allah want to do something he say be is going to be? So why he left his chair? Is Allah creation limited to him leaving the chair so he can do it? Or he can do it and he is sitting in the chair? Well the verse saying clearly that he was not on the chair and after he finished the work he went to the chair, so he was not on the chair. All those verses present to us a movement of the God of Islam. Indeed, your Lord is Allah. And here, this is very funny, because if Allah is the one who is talking, why he is saying, indeed, your Lord is Allah? Obviously, the one who is talking is the author of the book, who is speaking about his God, and the Muslims are very confused, and they think that Allah is talking. Who created the heaven and the earth in six days, and then he stawa? Hmm. Look here what, what, the, what the Muslim, they translate the word stawa. Rose over, over what? Over the throne. Allah, he climbed on the throne? So, what happened here, according to this guy, that he rejected that God, he have any human feature like resting. But here, not only Allah is setting to rest, Allah is climbing the throne. Which means Allah is was lower than the throne because in order to go up to the throne, that's mean you were down the throne. Guys, do you understand what I'm saying? Even their Muslim translation says rose, rose. He went up to where to the throne. So Allah, He went down the chair. And where, Allah, Allah, where are you? I'm here. I'm here. Are you under my chair? So Allah now is under the chair. Is not a problem for this Abdul. But the word Sabbath, that God rest, the word translation saying, is a problem for God should not rest. But we showed you from Isaiah, where it says clearly that God don't rest, and God don't get tired, and God don't faint. But now what we discover in your religion that your God Allah, He is the one who need to rest. Otherwise, I challenge you to explain to me why He left the chair to do the creation. And then when He is done with the creation, He climbed up to the chair. And by the way, can't Allah order the chair to come down? You see, if Allah is God, and yet he cannot make his chair come to him. He has to go to the chair. So who is more important? Do you understand people what I'm saying? It is Allah who went to the chair. It's not the chair went to Allah. So Allah is incapable of moving his chair to come to him like a car. Allah himself, he have to climb up, not only to go, he is not going like in a flat road, he is climbing up to the chair. And here we need to ask the very simple question, God, he was creating the earth and the heaven. 
but why God he need to leave the chair to create the earth and the heaven? And when Allah, he finished the creation, why he is climbing up to the chair? And how Allah was under the chair? Because when you say Allah was under the chair, that means Allah was contained in the space with the chair on. For he is in a space which is under the chair. And when Allah, he rose up to the chair, what happened? Allah became different God. He became a king now before the chair he was not. In the same time, the Quran described the, 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 the throne of Allah. You see here the word is a throne. But Muhammad, because he's a fool, he used Aramaic word, which is kursi. And kursi means a chair, literally. It's not a throne. Kursi is not a throne. Kursi is a normal chair. Throne present authority. Kursi present nothing. Like you have a kursi on the table, dining room, a coffee shop, Starbucks, this is kursi. So if you go to any Middle Eastern country, you want a chair, you say, give me kursi. So chapter 22, chapter 2, verse number uh, uh, 225, 255, sorry. It says that the size of the chair of Allah is in the size of the earth and the heaven. And here you see the translation says the throne, but the fact does not say the word the throne, it says kursi. But look what happened here. If the size of the chair of Allah is covering all the earth and the heaven, okay. And now Allah is climbing as we showed you in the previous verse, he rose up to the throne, okay. But the throne is covering the holy space in the top of the space. So in order for Allah to go to the throne, he have to make a hole inside the throne. Maybe you are not getting my point yet. Let us do something else. We have to use some drawing. The word thrown in Arabic is Arsh. Arsh. All right? So let us say, let us describe the verse in the Quran as it is. We will add nothing, we will take off nothing. As the, the, the verse described, we will draw it. So let us say that this is the, the sky. And now underneath the sky is the earth. Let us change the color. So underneath the sky, there is the earth. And both of them, according to the Quran, they have the same size. Because the Quran says the chair of Allah cover the, the, the sky and the earth. Now let us draw the throne of Allah or the chair of Allah. Let us make it uh, green, Mr. Green, or Mr. Bean, or red. So this is the throne of Allah. And remember the throne of Allah, or the chair of Allah, is exactly in the same size of the space underneath and the land. To make it simple, let me erase this part here, and draw it to make it perfectly the same size as the verse saying. So now this is the earth and the heaven as a space underneath. Now Allah wanna go to the throne. How he have to go? He have to go inside the throne in order to climb the throne. Because remember, the throne is exactly the same size of the heaven and the earth. He cover, he cover the earth and the heaven. So now Allah have to make a hole inside the chair to go up. Another issue here that in this point, Allah was here. 
After Allah, he start working for six days. This is number, day number one, day number two, day number three, day number four, five, six. Allah now, he have to go to the throne. Wonderful. You said you refuse anyone have a human nature. But all of this is a human nature. I cannot plant a tree in my yard unless I move from my chair. And if I am too short, then I have to go down the chair, which is proving that Allah is too short compared to the chair. He's a midget. Because if, he, if Allah is bigger than the chair, he did not need to rose up to the chair. When the verse in the Quran says that Allah, he rose up, he rose. That's mean Allah was down before he rose. So Allah, he go up and down. He is a yo-yo. I go up down too, but I'm not a yo-yo. What we prove here that Allah cannot create unless he go down, down his chair. Number two, Allah took him six days, and you just said that you refuse God who have a human nature, and a human nature simply take your time. You see, the Bible says God created earth and heaven in six days. And a Muslim might say to me now, well, are you saying that your God to have a, a human nature? My friend, we Christians, we accept God to have, to come as a human anyway. We believe Jesus came to us as a human. But I'm using your logic to show you how stupid your logic can be used against you. For if God, if you want to create something, he say be, and Allah nowhere created anything by saying be. If you go in the book, of, in the Bible, you will see that God, he said, let be light and light was. Your God never created anything by B. When the Quran says the similarity between Jesus and Adam is like they are similar. Why? For Allah, he says, let be, and he was. But if you go check the creation of Adam and the creation of Isa, in the Quran, you will see neither of them was created by B. Stupid Quran. The Quran confirmed that Allah, when he created Adam, first he made mud. First, he made mud. Second, which means he mixed water with, uh, with dust. This is what mud means, right? Second, after that, he fashioned him. And after he fashioned him, he breathed into him. Where is B? Hmm? This is the creation of Adam in the Quran, just to show you how stupid this book is. We created man from sounding clay. So Allah made sound of clay, and that by mixing water with dust. And then we made him into a shape. And then he created the genie from fire. But you don't explain really how he did that. And then he says to Allah, the angels, I am going to create, you know, a bashar, a human being, from sounding clay and molded into a shape. What is B? And then when I fashioned him, do you see the word when? It's mean time. I have fashioned him and I breathe into him. So what is B? In order for Allah to create Adam, he had to fashion the mud which he did. So number one is making mud. Number two, fashioning the mud in the shape of a human being. Number three, breathing into the human being mud yet, who is not a human being yet, is not alive yet. So he breathed into him. When he breathed into him, he became Mr. Adam. But you just said you don't accept God to be a human being in nature. Shouldn't you accept God who creates by saying be?
why God he need to do stages of a creation why the God of his time cannot do the, what, what the God of the Christian and the Jews you know did let be light and light was let be light didn't you see that in the book of Genesis as long as you mention Genesis number chapter 2 so you you did read Genesis chapter 2 but you did not read Genesis chapter 1 let be light hmm? that is God God did not need to leave his chair So he can create the earth and the heaven. That is the God of the Christians. God of Islam, he have to come down of the chair. And he went down to where a human is going to live. Which means he was contained inside the sky, inside the earth. And then after he finished, he went back up to the throne or to the chair. Now here, when they translate the word stawa, you see the word stawa in, in, in the letter here, they put it for you. The Muslim, by the way, don't dare to explain this word too much. However, if we go and see the interpretation for the verse, we will see what stawa means. But most of Muslims don't dare really to speak about it. Look, we are looking for Allah, we find a shoe. Okay, Muslim website. Let us see what the word istawa mean. قال الشيخ القاسم ورد الاستواء على معان اشتراك لفظه فيها فجاء بمعنى الاستقرار ومنه استوت على الجود You see I showed you the verse of استوى على الجود which mean the, the the ark of of Noah rested on the on the and on the top of the mountains so he sat on the mountains If we use Google Translation, let us do this. We open it with Google. Give me a second. Actually, let us make it more simple. Here it says, وقال البخاري في آخر صحيحه في كتاب الرد على الجهمية في باب قوله تعالى وكان عرشه على الماء قال مجاهد استوى وعلى على العرش. Translation. Google Translation. Al-Bukhari, in his book, Answering the Jahmiyyah, he said, The Almighty, uh, his throne was above the water. Mujahid, he says, he is on the throne. This is the Google translation, which isn't pretty really accurate. But he lift up himself in the top of the throne. So obviously Allah is sitting on the throne. The Muslim don't dare to describe how he sit, because the second they describe, that's mean Allah, he have an ass. Like Allah, do Allah, he sit over his lips. Do Allah he set over his finger? Do Allah set over his shin? So as long as this person he don't accept God to be God if he have any human feature as he said in his video then he should not accept Allah for everything about Allah is a human feature. Everything.
don't devote five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day to the Quran. No, devote more, an hour, an hour and a half to recite the Quran and to learn what it says at the same time. Now, in the Quran, Surah Al-Rahman, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Everything will be perished except Allah Azza wa Jal. And here Allah Azza wa Jal is referring to himself by saying that his face will remain, which means Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, will not perish. He okay, uh, the face of Allah will stay. What about the rest? Allah, uh, Allah ass will be burned. Allah shin will be burned. Allah legs will be burned. Allah uh, hands will be burned. Very silly. But anyway, this is what the Muslims understand and they accept that this is a physical face. He is the first without a beginning and he is the last without an ending. Azza wa Jal. He's the creator of the all, right. uh, uh, what you see and what you do not see. Mm. And he's not created. Mm -hmm. And he does not die. And he does not have an ending. Okay. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah described in the Quran that he has a face. Allah described in the Quran that he has two hands when he addressed Iblis, Satan. And he told him, what prevented you from prostrating to what I have created with my two hands? So this is what Allah described himself. Allah says in Surah Al Qalam that on the day of judgment Allah Azza wa Jal would uplift and show his leg. <laughs> but we heard the Abdul, the Chinese Abdul saying that he don't accept God who uh, you know rest. So rest is a problem for you. And even that word there is not even meant what you are saying. But it's not a problem for you that God cannot do anything unless he go down from the chair. And God, after he go and finish six, working for six days non-stop, he take a vacation, and then he go and sit on the chair. And that is not rest for you. And you refuse God to be having any human future. feature. And your, your God have five fingers. Allah have two hands. And both of them, they are in the right shoulder. Allah have a shin, and he was going to do striptease for us. Allah have a face. Allah have a leg. Allah have a shoulder. Can you believe the hypocrisy of this cult? So if we apply what this guy, he said on his own religion, his religion became shish kebab, is destroyed. So when he say, uh, uh, how God can rest? This is not about resting of being tired. Rest is mean everything is done. Nothing more to do. If you go even check what the word rest mean, you will see that this is not about you know, if, if the verse saying that God, he got tired and he rested, I would say, okay, it says that. It says Sabbath. This is the day of no work more to be done. Regardless if you are tired or not, even for a human being. Let us say somebody, he is a Jew. He don't have a work. He don't go to work. He sleep all day long. In the Sabbath, there is things he cannot do, he used to do every day in the week. As an example, they even don't cook. So they cook a day before, and the Sabbath, they don't cook. They don't clean. So, Sabbath have nothing to do with being tired, have to do with a day of nothing to be done. So when the Bible says that in that day God he did what the Sabbath is, which translates as a, as a rest. He is speaking about God, he finished his work. Yet in your Quran, your God Allah, when he finished his work, according to the Quran, he had to rest literally, because he described himself going up off a throne or a chair. For if he is not tired, why he need to sit on the chair anyway? When we say to somebody, a chair, see here they are using the word throne because this verse says the word throne, but different verses says chair, literally chair. If you change the translator here, you will see how the word chair will appear. It depends in the mood of the translator, how much decency he have. And most of them, they don't have any. <clears throat> what happened? Hold on.
and for sure we are not done we have more uh, surprised if you look with me here the the word in yellow is the word share do you see kursi do you see it you can take a screenshot if you want this is a chapter 2 verse number 255 and the reason I'm saying to you you can take a screenshot because I want to go and compare it to other verse where a man his name is Suleiman he had the same word describing his chair kursi it's exactly the same word actually I will take a screenshot myself from a chapter 255 and I will bring it here next to this and I will put it together so you will see that both man and God they have a chair and the Quran describe his chair by using the word kursi and he described the chair of Suleiman by using the word kursi this is the verse we took a screenshot for it and this is the other one you see it in the screen look at them both chapter 38 verse number 34 describing the chair of Suleiman. Do you see it? So why Allah have a chair the same as the chair of Suleiman? Suleiman is a man. Allah is what? Why Suleiman he sit on the chair? Because it's impossible for a man to stand all day long. Is Suleiman a king without the chair? Yes, he is. He have a chair or not, that will not change anything. Still, he is the king of his kingdom. So the chair is what? You might say this is a throne and present the authority, no problem, but he sat on it. And Allah is using exactly the same word he used for the chair of Suleiman, he used it for himself. Both of them, they have kursi. So why Allah, he sit on a kursi and, Allah, and, and Suleiman sit in a kursi? I thought we cannot make God like a man. But obviously, your God himself, he is comparing himself to a man. All kings, they have a chair. See, in Christianity, he wouldn't have a problem with that. In Islam, they have a big problem with that. Because the Muslim, they, they make their God as a fantasy God. But in the same time, when you look at the description, you will see that God have hands, have fingers, have nails, you know, a, 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 even he have orgasm. And as long as you are talking about limitation of God by saying he rest, because this is the point of saying he rest, right? He is limited, right? Then, how do you explain to me your God saying, how can he have a son if he don't have a girlfriend? That means he is limited in a very, very bad way. For this is something a man can say as an excuse of not having children. Can Allah have a son without having a girlfriend? The answer no. So Allah is limited as a male God. And the funny, the Muslim, they will say to you, Allah is not a male or female. What are you talking about? Why Allah, he keeps saying he? And why he is saying, I don't have a girlfriend? What he don't, what about he say, how I, how I can have a, a son, I don't have a boyfriend. So when he chose the girlfriend, side of the story he chose to be a male god so the male allah who call himself always he sometime we because he's multiplied like a bacteria 
How can he have a children's? And what kind of God he used such a language? How can he? The second you say, how can he? That's mean, how can he be God? Because God, he can. The God of the Christians, he can make Mary have a child without having a boyfriend. The God of Muhammad, he cannot make himself have a child without having a girlfriend. And you see the translation, you see a wife? Nowhere in the verse it says wife, it says sahiba. Sahiba means a girlfriend, concert. A woman in the bed, just for fun, not a wife. They lie when they translate. They love to lie. Nowhere it says the word wife. Nowhere. Do we have any question from any Muslim about what we just said? Any objection? If you are a Muhammad and you have objection, please object. But as you see, I'm showing you reference from your books. Let us go to the second part of the video. So we don't want to repeat the same part twice here. Let us go to the second reason he says the Bible is not the word of God. Okay. Tuhan menyesal menciptakan manusia di muka bumi ini. Six. And you treat it down and God's regret create mankind on earth. Dia kata Tuhan menyesal menciptakan manusia di muka bumi ini. Berarti Tuhan dah cipta manusia tiba-tiba silap cipta budak Cina ni. <laughs> so he's saying in the Bible, in, in Genesis chapter 6, verse number 6, it says that God, he regret. And he is saying, so God saying he made a mistake. Listen. Apa maksud menyesal? Menyesal berarti tak ada ilmu masa depan. Sudah buat. When you regret, that means you do not know the future. I like that. I want the Muslim to take a note of this. When you regret doing something, it's mean you do not know the future. To make it simple, and I agree with him, by the way, in, 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 in such a, a statement, that the word regret is obviously that you did something you, don't, you should not do. This is what the word regret coming with. But is this what the Bible says? We will get him busted in a second. So he made a mistake and he regret doing that mistake. And what is the mistake? Is it creating this Chinese boy? Is that what he said? Ayah, silap betul. Saya nak tanya. Menyesal ni sifat Tuhan ke sifat manusia? Regret is the nature of the human or the nature of God. Kalau sifat manusia, siapa yang tulis ayat ini? So it's hard for me to accept this verse. Let us get this Abdul busted. First of all, the Bible says it clearly that God don't regret. God don't repent. God don't. None of this have to do with God. When the verse you are reading for us about Genesis, you idiot, is saying that God he felt sorry for mankind. He created them for a reason, and look what they did to themselves. Those cowards, they don't even read the verse. And God, he saw the wickedness of the man was a great on earth. And that every imagination of thought of his heart was only evil. Like, I mean, so describing for you how God he felt for those people he created. He created them to live in heaven. And look what they are doing to themselves. I remember we in Christianity, we don't believe in destiny. So God don't destiny to add them to commit sin. He do not destiny as a stupid Islam that you are going to do adultery. He do not destiny that you do sin because Allah want to have fun. So when God here, he says that he regret what happened to the human being. He is feeling sorry for the human being is not about the decision he made.
and the word here can be translated in a different way. It says like, uh, 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 you know, uh, he feels sorry, he regret, uh, uh, and it repented the Lord. So this is an interpretation of or explanation of how God, he felt for the human being. Look what they did. Now I'm going to destroy them. Now I want to go with him in what he said, and let us see what will happen to Islam then. Did your God Allah, regarding the same story, he said the same thing? Is it Allah he destroyed Noah, people? Why? Because he regret his creation. When Allah he made the flood of Noah, when you build something, when you are God and you build something, and then you destroy what you build it, that's mean you regret building it. Otherwise, why he killed them? In the Bible, regret and here have nothing to do with regret. Of God as God, regretting his decision to create. In the Quran it is, and we will show you the reference. The God of the Bible, he felt sorry. Sorrow for those people. I created to live happy, to be in heaven. And look what they did to themselves. So if we go and we read the book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse number 19, we will see that God is not a man who should lie. It's not the nature of God. And he is not born of any man, and that is the same as Jesus. Even though Jesus, he called himself son of man because he came in the nature of a man, but he is not the son of any man. And the, and the Quran agree with that, that Mary, she have no man as a partner. Therefore, Jesus is not the son of any man that he should repent you see it or regret this is the bible too so how come you saw that you did not see this because you are a copy paste of ahmad that you are a potato so god he did not regret as a decision he made god he felt sorry for what he will do to them and the penalty and the punishment the same what happened when the jews they've been taken uh, 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 into a slavery. God, he felt sorry for them. And then you will see that your God, Allah, he felt sorry for his creation and he regret creation starting from the people of Noah and the people of Ad and the people of Thamud and the people of Abraham. All of those, Allah, he regret creating them, and this is why he destroyed them. If Allah is the one who built this creature, and then Allah, he destroyed that creature which he built, obviously Allah, he found that he, ho he have a wrong decision. Because remember, the God of Islam is a stupid God. He is the one who made those people commit sin, and then he is going to destroy them for committing sin. The God of the Christianity, he is not regretting the creation, he is regretting for them what will happen as a penalty and punishment, which means he feels sorry for them. Here, that does not make sense, because according to the Islam, is everything is a fate, which means when a Muslim, he commits sin. When the people of Noah commit sin, when the people of Abraham commit sin, when the Jews commit sin, when the Muslim commit sin, when the Christian commit sin, according to Islam, it was a fate, it was a destiny, it was not a choice. And just to show you, a stupid repent of Allah, a clear example so Muslims can't play with it. Allah created Adam. Adam committed sin.
Allah cursed Adam. Chapter 2, verse number 36. Allah, he cursed Adam. He said, get down out of it, both of you. Who? Adam and Eve, and to follow is Shaitan. So get down out of it. In the verse number 38, it make it more clear. It says all of you, which means Shaitan, Adam, and Eve. Get ye down all from here. Okay, hold on. So Allah in chapter 2, verse number 35, Allah, he says, okay, go and sit in the heaven, you and your wife, Adam. Satan, he whispered to them, and he made them eat from the tree. Allah, he cursed them. A verse after, Allah, he repent. He forgive Adam. <laughs> You see the word regret? So now what you will say? You will say, no, uh, he felt sorry for Adam and he accepted his repentance. So how come in that verse in the Bible, it does not go for you that way, but here it goes this way. Allah, he made a decision that Adam, you are bad. Adam, he said two words, two words to Allah. Please, Allah, forgive me. Allah, he forgave him. That's it. So what happened to the decision of Allah? So Allah, he changed, his, he regret, he regret making a decision, he changed his decision based on the situation. So did Allah felt sorry here or he regret? Do you see it, Muslims? Allah, he decide to punish Adam and Eve. Then Adam, he learned, uh, then learned Adam from his word of inspiration and his Lord turned toward him for if returning merciful. What is this translation? I mean, this translation is made by who? Who is the donkey? Yusuf Ali, come on, this guy is stupid. I mean, what is this? Repent to receiving word, what is that? Change the idiot. Let us get different idiot. Adam received from his uh, from his Lord words, and his Lord bur burdened him. Okay, hold on. But Allah already He said to him, "Get down! I punish you." Did Allah regret cursing Adam, and now He? change his decision yes he did and to make it more stupid if allah he burdened him so why he kick him out of heaven still idiot you just burden him i mean he just burdened him and allah is all the merciful and allah he accepted and he forgive him and then he said to them right away get down all of you like, have you ever heard of somebody says to you i forgive you get out of here but but this is what you say it before you forgive him before he forgive him he said get down you see it and get them out from here this is before he forgive them so now allah after a verse he received adam he received word from his god that he forgive him still he get him out did allah regret creating adam Did Allah say the stupid things when he cursed Adam and later he forgive him, he changed his mind? Isn't it Allah is all knowledgeable of the future? Because this guy in the video says, God, he knew the future. So how he can regret? And let me show you another example of Allah regretting, which a Muslim cannot refute in any way, in any mean. Allah made Quran. Allah, he regret the Quran. Allah, he will fix the Quran. Have you ever heard of a stupid regret like this? Read with me carefully. Whatever a verse between two bracket revelation, we do abrogate or cause to be forgotten. 
Allah he regret giving you Quran and he will cause you to forget that Quran because it's horrible question Allah he sent Quran to be forgotten or to be remembered any Muslim can tell me Allah he sent Quran down to earth to be forgotten or to be remembered the Muslim they say to us we remember it by heart Hmm? In chapter 87, verse number 6, it says, And we shall make you recite the Quran. That doesn't say, by the way, uh, recite. It says, Make you read the Quran. So that you will not forget. Okay, did Allah change his mind? Did Allah regret saying these words? That I will make you say Quran, and I will shall make you not forget it. Who is a stupid here? Did Allah made Muhammad forget the Quran or he did not make him forget the Quran? I'm just closing some pages. Too many pages open. Okay. So one verse says, I will never let you forget the Quran. The other verse saying, I will cause you to forget the Quran. Obviously, Allah regret saying the previous verse. This is the chapter 2, verse 106. And this is the chapter 87, verse number 6. All of them, they are miraculously, it is number 6. Did you notice that? The Muslim, they will make a miracle about it. We shall make you read the Quran and you will not forget it. Hmm. Here, whatever verses of revelation we abrogate, all cause to be forgotten. Look, we just said to Muhammad, you will never let him forget it. Did Allah regret his promise? Obviously he did. And not only that, Allah he regret making the previous Quran. Read with me carefully. We bring better one or similar well, if Allah is not regretting the previous one, how he is saying he will bring you better one? Do you know what better mean? Better mean that the one was before it was worse. So now we understand why Allah, he caused you to forget the Quran. For he noticed that this stupid Quran, and now I regret making the Quran, and now I will make you forget the Quran, so you will not see how stupid I was, and you will not remember how funny my words was, so I'm going to make you forget what I said, for it is funny, like Mr. Bean. Have you ever heard of a God? He will cause his followers to forget what he said to them? I thought God would be upset if people forget what he said to them. Here Allah, he wants you to forget because he regrets saying those words and now he is going to fix it and don't worry, be happy. Even if your girlfriend is having a new boyfriend, I'm going to give you a better one. Have you ever heard of a God he is going to make Quran better than the Quran? What kind of logic this logic is? When Allah, he said, I'm going to give you better one. He's talking about better Quran. Why Allah, he went to school and he got better Arabic training. He is now older, wiser. So Allah, he regret making the first Quran and now I'm going to make the second Quran and now I'm going to fix it by some, giving you something better. And here we have to ask ourselves a question. How the better Quran work for you Muslims? And where is the bad Quran? Hey Muslims, who can recite for me the forgotten verses of the Quran? Hey Muslims, aren't you the one who says the Quran is preserved? When you God himself saying to you, I make you forget Quran. But we know what happened here. The stupid Muhammad cannot recite the verse twice. So in the morning he says something, afternoon he says something, and then people, they say to him, what are you talking about? You said different thing in the morning. So Muhammad had to come with excuse. Don't worry, be happy. Allah, he calls me, forget it, and Allah will give me something better. 
and he make it big poopoo by saying similar. How stupid is that to make you forget the verse and give you something similar? So what the point? Allah regret? Who is here really forgetting the Quran? Is it Allah or Muhammad? All of this is a form of regret. Do Allah knew the future? The guy he said in the video, God should know the future. Okay, well, do God know the future that his verse, those verses are bad? Don't God, he knew the future that I'm going to cause them forget it. So why he said it first of all anyway? What is the point? What is the point? I do what is the point? What is the point? So now I send you Quran and I make you recite the Quran and, 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 and tell you to preserve the Quran and I promise you never forget the Quran and then after two weeks I will say to you I will make you forget all what I said to you. Who is this stupid here? So when those people, they make uh, statements, we laugh. It's just a stupid silly. They don't, you know, this guy, he is like a camel who don't see his hump. He don't see how big the hump is in the top of his head. And I like it when he says that, do God know the future? Your God don't know not know the future. We can prove it. Not only now, we prove it with this. We can prove it with 10 examples. Sebab saya percaya ini bukan sifat Tuhan. Tuhan tahu segala-galanya. Dia tahu ciptaannya. Dia bukan dah cipta kemudian baru tahu. Dia bukan begitu. Did he say that God he know everything? Did we hear him saying God knows everything? I challenge you to prove to me that your God knows anything. It's a challenge for any Abdul in the world to prove to me that your God knows anything. As an example, the God of Islam, he is the one who knew where the baby came from. Where he came from. Go to chapter 87, 86. Read verse number 6 and 7. And die laughing. The sperm of the man coming from his backbone and the sperm of the woman coming from her ribs. Since when women have a sperm? Huh? A hey, Muslim, since when? Women, they have a sperm. Is that something new? Chapter 86, verse number 6 and 7. He created you from water gushing forth, proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. Shall we go and see the interpretation so the Muslim will not say we are making things up?
Did I hit you in your nose or your toes? Did you lose your teeth or not yet? So you are making fun of the Bible saying the word they. And you say how they can be exist. Let us talk about basic logic of science. Your stupid prophet not only saying it's a day, he is using the word Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And then when Allah created the sun in Wednesday, in the Bible, the first thing God created was light. Let be light. So there, based on your logic, if there's no light, there is no day. But in the Bible it says, let be light. And he called the daylight. The day he called it light. Coward potato. And God called the light day. Do you see it? Not the sun day. He called the light day. So we have before the earth is created, we have a light, and that is called day. And darkness called night. And that is for God. In your religion, your God he is using the word they, and yet there's no light at all. As you see, this is chapter 41. Do we have any Muslim? So this is the guy who will teach you how and why I convert to Islam. He just killed your prophet in his grave. He just pee on him. Because he just insulted your prophet, saying that the one who believe in such a thing, this is a scientific error. All of you heard him, it's documented, and the video is there. And he said, let us be speaking about basic knowledge of science. Let me play it for you if you are slow. Are you slow? There's no way you are slow. You are a Muslim. This is why Islamic countries are the fastest growing countries by birth, but not by science. He explained to you. It's obvious. Tuhan beristirahat. Nanti dulu. Kalau muslimi muslimat di sini ada asas sains saja. Ada asas sains saja. Cuba tengok. Cuba dengar di sini. Si dia kata ciptaan Tuhan pada hari yang pertama. Macam mana dia boleh ada hari pertama pada hari pertama? Saya tahu you tak faham lagi. Saya tanya. Macam mana kita boleh dapat pagi, petang, malam atau sehari? Dia putaran bumi dan putaran matahari. Baru kita boleh dapat Pagi, petang, malam, satu hari. Hey, hold on, I just remember something now. I mean, come on, how I missed that? Did he say that the earth rotating? This is edit, he says the earth is rotating and this is how the day and the night happen. Is that what the Quran is saying? Let us go and see. Idiot. Look at you, you are so cute. So the day and the night happen because the earth is rotating? Let us go and see what your prophet said about that. Do your prophet agree with this Abdul? Absolutely not. Here we go. Ah, Lord have mercy. I thought I'm going to go for 20 minutes. I will stop, stop soon and then we can continue if we want to continue later. Uh, read, read, Abdul, read. This is your prophet. This is Sayyid Bukhari. Uh -huh. So the earth rotate, brother? Are you sure? Basic science, huh? Are you saying that your prophet is an idiot? Brothers and sisters, the earth rotated, brother. The earth, the day and the night happened because the earth rotated. Let's read together. Once I was with the Prophet in the mosque, and again, this is Sahih al-Bukhari, so don't play the game of weak and stupid things. I was with the Prophet in the mosque. At the time of the sunset, the Prophet said, O Abu Dur, Dur mean an ant. Do you know the father of the ants? Because he played with ants. Do you know where the sun set? Muhammad is asking the question. 
The guy, he replied, Allah and his apostles know best. Muslims are mushrikeen. They associate the knowledge of God with the knowledge of a man. That is a pure shirk. Shirk is associating a person with God. And Muslim, they associate the knowledge of God with the knowledge of a man. So Allah and his apostle knows best. Did Muhammad say to him, don't say that? No, he loved it. Actually, he's saying this so he can hear that sentence. He said, who Muhammad? It goes and prostrate underneath Allah's throne. But the idiot, he told us in the video, that the earth is rotating, rotating. No, it does not. Your prophet says the sun going. It is the sun goes. And then Muhammad continues saying, and that is the statement of, of the Quran, Allah saying, and the sun runs onto a fixed course for a term a decree. Do you see it? So the Quran in chapter 36, verse number 38 says, the sun run every day. The Muslim, they lie to us about the, this verse in, the, in videos. They say, this is about the end of the time. The direction of the sun will change. No, 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 no. It's the, the sun will shrink. Your prophet. Uh, do you understand the Quran better than your prophet? Coward liar. Now you want to deny what your prophet said? So your prophet explained the chapter 36, verse number 38, saying this is how the sun goes every day. It's a, a term, it's a course where the sun every day have to go and prostrate under the throne of Allah. And then Muhammad, he gave us more details in different story, where he says that the sun will keep doing that, going every day from the east to the west. Until one day Allah will say to her, to the sun, don't go back from the east go and appear from the west and the hadith in front of you and this is Sahih Bukhari the prophet asked me at the sunset do you know where the sun goes I replied Allah and his apostle know better he said it goes i.e. travel till it's prostrate itself underneath the throne and takes permission to rise again do you see it so it's the sun going the guy he said let us talk about this science the earth is rotating so you just killed your prophet, you idiot. You just made fun of your prophet. You just said clearly that basic science is basic stupidity in Islam. And vice versa. When, you, when a Muslim like you, saying that he was a Buddha, and then he was a Christian for 24 hours, and then he changed his uh, religion, after uh, etc. And then you say to us, why? We die laughing. Because everything you said, you reject to be your faith is in your faith. So guys, I'm going to stop for now. Don't forget please to download the video. Feel free to cut it pieces based on the topic because we spoke about three topics already. You can make it shorter, add a translation to your own language. All my videos are for free. And soon I'm going to give uh, uh, all my books actually for free with no exception. You know, I already we give a lot of my books for free, but soon I'm going to give everything I have for free. And not because we are rich, but the Lord, he will reach us. The Lord is our provider. It is not a man. It's not a shaitan. It's not the cult of Muhammad. So soon I will publish all my books for free. Already we publish, I don't know, 10, 15 books for free. Soon we will give. Nothing will stop us. I know many of you, they don't really care. I know many of you go subscribe in Patreon and don't support us. Just, you know, you, you, you just subscribe there and you don't care to support. But the Lord is my supporter, is not you. And our fight against the devil, and I say our fight, for this is the fight of those who believe in the Lord, not only me. Nothing will stop it. Nothing can take it down. The truth will set you free, the Lord said. It's not the dollar. It's not the money. It's not their propaganda. It is the truth. And when people, they see the truth and they see this guy lying about his religion, ignorant about his stupidity, showing us something he reject when it is in his religion, people will die laughing and then the truth will kill everything he said. We destroy you today, not by saying you are a fool, but by proving it that you are a liar.
Everybody will laugh at you. And we are not done. We are not even half of the video. So what would happen by the end? Imagine. So I say, may the Lord bless you all. And we invite Muslims to provide us with their scholars if they dare to debate me. I will be happy uh, to take your scholars in a nice trip. They will get dizzy. They will collapse like your prophet. The prophets of the Abdul. Who make Quran just for the benefit of his testicles and his pocket. So thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I'm expecting from you, all of you, to download the videos, especially this one, especially if you are Chinese, especially if you are from Malaysia, especially if you speak Indonesian. Add subtitle. Let everybody see the truth, and the truth will set them free. So thank you. God bless you. And I apologize. I got to go. As I said to you, I have a pain in my muscles, and I pray the Lord will hear it fast. It's going really better, but still, I'm staying too long on the chair, which I should not do. And each time I say to myself, I will not stay this time long, but what you can do. It's hard for me to make it short. So thank you. May the Lord bless you. Christ is Lord. Islam got busted, as always. Victory by the name of Jesus. Victory over Satan. And we are here to save the Muslims. We are not here to attack the Muslims. Islam is a cult. Islam will not save you. Muhammad himself is going to go to hell. A God is not a pimp. The God who promised you endless penis cannot be God. Don't be a fool. Have you ever heard of a God promise endless penis? Have you ever heard of a God who promised you a woman her ass is one mile? What's wrong with you? Isn't it obvious? Have you ever heard of a God who promised you 70 years orgasm? Why? He's a playboy God. Why you call him holy then? And if you are going to do 70 years orgasm for each woman, if the orgasm alone is 70 years, how long is the sex? And what the point? And if you have 72 women, and then you are going to have 70 years orgasm, that's mean the first woman you step with is going to have her turn 4,500 years after. Do you, and, and the funny, they speak about science, basic science. Look who is talking. Thank you. God bless you. Christ is Lord. And see you soon. Take care.